Good to see everybody this morning. It was so good to hear everybody out there just enjoying themselves, uh, being here in the house of God today. And I'm certainly looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful time. Got a lot of activities coming up the next two or three months, literally between here and Christmas. Don't forget next Saturday is going to be our fall festival here at the church, and that's going to start at 430. The next Saturday, of course, is going to be the stew. The next Sunday after that, we'll be starting on the 5th. Uh, we'll be starting our revival with Matthew Burr's coming, and he'll be preaching Sunday morning, Sunday night, and through Wednesday night of uh, that first week of November. And then there's lots of other things that are going on as far as the Christmas shoe boxes and things of that nature that you can find there in your bulletins. Also, we just want to be much in prayer for so many that are in bereavement right now. I was talking with Staley a while ago, and he's had five people pass away in his uh, family in the last short period of time. And, of course, all the others that have been in bereavement as well, we want to remember them in prayer in a very special way and ask God to be with them uh, as well. Also, I had some good news this morning that uh, my dad's dementia has been cured. Well, yeah, been cured. Amen to that. And uh, he don't have to be in a wheelchair no more. And he got to check out of the nursing home early this morning to go to heaven. So I'm thankful that God got him and carried him on home. God bless you this morning. Let's go ahead and worship the Lord now. I believe we've got a special guest singing coming up this morning for our opening praise song. So y'all ladies, come on. Y'all, the family, come on. Whoever's with Walk right 
beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? Search until I found you and I do it all again. Boy, what a beautiful way to start out a good morning service here in the house of God. And also, we just want to welcome everybody here to God's house today. I think we've got a very special first-time visitor today, haven't we? Uh, Chris, how about holding up that little one here this morning? All right. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. Also, we'd just like to welcome every visitor. And if you are here visiting today, just please raise your hand, and we want to give you a visitor's package as the ushers come forward. Amen to that. But let's do good to the Lord in prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, our hearts are filled with great joy today as you have already begun to stir within our hearts and our souls. We're thankful for your presence here in our midst today, dear God, in the way that, dear God, that you have the power to do all things. There's nothing impossible for you to do. And whatever the needs of your people are, not only here but throughout the world, God, you are able to take care of us. You'll meet each one of our needs according to thy riches and glory. And Lord, I pray in the precious name of Jesus that more people, dear Heavenly Father, will give their hearts and their lives to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For people that are lost, I know God, don't know what they're missing. To have a constant companion that can help them in every situation, can bless them beyond compare, to give them peace that passes all understanding and joy that's so unspeakable. Lord, today, help us all to lift up Jesus and help the choirs they sang and the special music this morning and, Lord, the message of the hour. Dear Lord, we pray for this nation. We pray for all that are serving this nation. We pray to Heavenly Father that you will bless every church that has gathered today along with every family, dear God, that are in bereavement, others that are facing surgery this week like Donnie and also we want to pray and Ask you, of course, to be with Joyce as she's going to be going through procedures this week as well. And, Lord, many others uh, that are taping treatments of one type or another. For these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Never go 
Turn around and greet each other this morning. Children can be this children's church and remain standing for off toward prayer.
to welcome each and every one of you here today. Glad you were here. Also, we have Sunday school in the mornings, so we'd love to have you here. Uh, that's a free plug for Sunday school, so we really love to see this crowd here at Sunday school. Uh, we also want to remember the ones that lost loved ones and uh, continue to have them in prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come today, Lord, and say, ask you to bless this service, Lord. You already have by the singing and the joyful uh, noise that we've made, Lord. We pray that you just touch us, Lord, and let us realize that the song they sung, Lord, reminded me that you come when we're in the most need of you. Yes. And it's you only can take care of it. Yes. Yes. So, Lord, I heard a song, and it said that you come at the last moment. And you had the right thing at the right place at the right time. By my experience, I know that's totally true. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Yes. Thank you for what you've done in this church over the years, Lord. Yes. Lord, you've blessed us and you give us a, a place to worship. And we pray that you'd continue to let it grow. Our youth is growing. Our, 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 our members are growing. Let us all just join together and have a fellowship that no other can have, Lord. We thank for this place. Lord, we come here to worship you and pray that you bless this service today. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Amen.
I want to sing a couple of songs. Sing a couple of songs for you today. And the first one says, I know. And I'm glad I know today that I've been born again. I know. And the Lord gave us the Word of God. If we do what the Word of God says to be born again, we're born again. We follow what He said. And then the other, the second song we're going to do is, That's Why There's a Cross. It talks about sin started in the garden ages ago, but didn't catch God off guard. God knew it. But God had a plan. He had already known there would be a, a cross one day made from a tree that God planted. He knew that. But because of sin, that's why there's a cross. I want you to listen to this, these two songs. I know, and then that's why there's a cross. I was just an old beggar. In sin, I had wandered. So far, far away from the foe Then an old-fashioned preacher Told me about Jesus And now I belong to Him I know I know Yes, I know This mark the Lord gave me, and I know I'm a child of the King. I've traded my rags for a home over yonder. I've given my all to my Lord. That day. Yes, I know, I know that I've been born again, and I know, I know, yes, I know, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, no power can erase it. This mark the Lord gave me, and I know I'm a child of the King. Well, I know, yes, I know, I know that I've been born again, and I This mark the Lord gave me, and I know I'm a child of the King. No power can erase it. This mark the Lord gave me. That's why there's a cross. Listen close to the words of this song. It began in a garden long ago. Sin entered the world to capture. 
German soul Minds were on evil continually But God had a plan to redeem you and me That's why there's a cross That's why there's the Our Heavenly Father shows His great love. He sent His own Son for what seemed a lost cause, since that was past. It seems evil's winning still today. Hearts are all filled with anger and rage. All we like sheep have gone astray and turned everyone to his own way. That's why. There's a cross That's why there's the blood Our Heavenly Father Shows His great love He sent His own Son I'm certainly glad that today I know that I've been born again. And I'm glad that it's not something you have to wait until you stand before the judgment seat of Christ to find out whether or not you made it in. And the reason that I know I've been born again is because of that old blood-stained cross that Jesus Christ went to back there on Calvary's mountain. It is so good to be here in the house of the Lord today. My heart goes out to those, of course, who have never known Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior who have never been born again. You just don't know what you're missing out, not only in life, but there's going to come a sad day of reality that you're going to realize you missed heaven. And of course, the alternative to heaven is none other than hell itself. And hell is a horrible place that people go to because they've chosen not to accept Jesus as the Son of God who died in their place on Calvary's cross. If you will please today, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter number 12. This is a passage of scripture that the Lord has laid on my heart, especially when we started looking at a new series in early worship concerning what is the will of God for our lives. And as I was looking at this this past week while I was on vacation, the Lord pointed out one certain word in verse number 2 of chapter number 12. And the Lord began to deal with my heart concerning this one special word. And I want to share with you this morning what the Lord has laid on my heart and I hope that it strikes your heart just as much so as it has struck in mine. So if you will please stand with me now, those of you that are able, as I read verse number 2 from the book of Romans chapter number 12. 
The Bible says, and be not conformed to this world. Now the word conform means don't try to become like this world. Don't try to fit in to the things of this world. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we should be peculiar people. The Bible goes on to say here, be not conformed to this world, but be you, and this is the word that God had drawn my attention to, transformed. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our Heavenly Father, we do bow in your presence. We want to humble ourselves, dear Heavenly Father, before you. And dear God, we want to exalt you this morning. For God, the singing here this morning has truly stirred my soul. And dear Heavenly Father, it has lifted me up. And God, it has accomplished what you intended for it to do. And Lord, I pray that now as your word has gone forth, that dear Heavenly Father, it will find the same paths that the, song, the words of these songs have already made. Lord, I pray that today through the presence of your Holy Spirit and the power that you have to break through every obstacle, every barrier, everything that every demon of hell may try to put up to keep people from coming to the place that you've been able to speak to their hearts. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name right now that your will will be done in each and every life of each and every soul that is present here this morning. Help me, Lord. Use me. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And you may be seated today in what a service God has allowed us to already participate in here today. I watch sometimes Fox News, and on Fox News they have this one man by the name of Waters. And ever so often they'll put him out on the street with a microphone, and he'll go up and ask them sometimes a very simple question. And sometimes it's very alarming and unusual to the response to a simple question that you would think everybody would know an answer to. Well, this morning, what if a reporter came up to you on the street one day, and what if that reporter stopped you and asked you, if you could, what would you change about yourself? If you could change anything about yourself, what could it be? There's a story of an old timer back in the days gone past Right between the time that they were getting away from the horse and buggy era and the automobile era, era was starting, this old country farmer took his wife on an old buckboard, and they went to the big city. Now, neither one of them had ever been in the big city before. They were just accustomed to going to the old hardware store and the country store near their home. But they decided to step out and to go see one of them big cities. And so they rode into the big city there on their horse and wagon, and the old farmer got off, and he seen this great big building, a building like he had never seen before. And so he walked into the entrance of the building while his wife remained there on the buckboard. And as he walked into the entrance of the building, he noticed that there was a little tiny room there to one side. And he noticed this elderly lady who had a cane and was bent over. She walked into that one little tiny cubicle, and the door closed. And as he watched that door as it closed, he continued to watch it above the door. The numbers would start going one, two, three, and it went all the way up to ten. Well, then when it hit ten, it come all the way back down to, to one. And he stood there and watched because he had never seen anything like that before. And he had never been in a building so big. Well, when the door opened, instead of this old woman coming out with her cane and bent over, this beautiful young woman come walking out the door. So immediately... This old farmer runs out to his wagon and says, Dear, you've got to try this. Come in here immediately. <laughs> so if you could change something about yourself, what would it be? A lot of times people would probably respond to the fact, Well, I'd like to lose a few pounds. Even some people would like to say, Well, it would be all right with me if I was just a couple of inches taller. And then, of course, the taller people would sometimes say, I'd like to be just a little bit shorter. And then, of course, there are some of those unfortunate people who would say, I'd like to be better looking. Of course, at this day and time, it is possible to change all kind of things about your appearance. Do you realize that even today, you can change the color of your eyes? That they got contacts that you can put into your eyes, and it will change the color of your eyes. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but it's been told to me that even in this day and time, you can change the color of your hair. Wow, 
What's up with that? <clears throat> you can have your teeth replaced. You can have them whitened. You can lose weight. And you can take care of those bulges that seem to be appearing myster mysteriously. So if we could wave a magic wand and change your outward appearance, would it really be a touch-up job or would it really be an extreme makeover? And if it was an extreme makeover, would we even recognize you? Now, I've seen a lot of people that were really handsome or good looking that they went and had all this plastic surgery business done. And friends, you couldn't even tell who they were, even in this day and time. So we are here today and we are concerned certainly with our ability to conform to the things of this world. And God is telling us in this passage of scripture, that's not important to me at all. As a matter of fact, God is saying, I don't want you to become conformed to the things of this world. And when God began to speak to my heart about this, he started telling me that, Steve, there should be a big change in your life. But the change that I'm looking for in your life is not your ability to conform to what this world thinks is important. What I'm talking about being changed in your life, this transformation that I believe that you should be going through right now, it should be an inner transformation. There should be something changing within you that really will one day show on the outside. You know, today in this day and time, we have become so caught up and all the things that the world expects of us. Look at what the Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16 in verse number 7, the Bible here says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on on the heart. You know what God's most concerned with concerning us today? Not so much as how we look on the outside. And isn't it sad in this day and time that a lot of churches, all they can preach about is how you look on the outside. And when they're preaching about basically how you look or should look on the outside, they are overlooking what really is important to God, and that's what you are on the inside. The Bible clearly tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse number 16, this, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. I cannot stop the process of aging, but I can, I can renew my inner self every day. Within my own heart, I can become younger, and in my own soul and my spirit can become stronger Matter of fact, if you read your Bibles, you'll be encouraged to look at the inner man, for it's very important. But you want to know something? I found out, especially here on vacation this past week, it's very hard to change my outward appearance. It really is. I started to let my hair grow out on top, <clears throat> and it was such a slow process that I went ahead and, and didn't pursue that any further. Uh, uh, but it's, it's hard to change your outward appearance. We went bike riding, and we rode some days 30 miles, some days 37 miles, some days 43 miles. Some days we walked, uh, one day particularly, we walked about five miles at one time. And you know what? We come home and we thought, well, my, I can't wait to get on them scales. I know there's no doubt about it. we have bound to have lost a bunch of weight while we've been down there at the beach this past week. You want to know something? Didn't lose a pound. Did not lose a pound. It's hard and change, literally, it comes slowly on the outside. But not only is it hard for us to change our outward appearance, it seems like sometimes it's even harder to change our inside. And that's what God here is saying when he is saying there should be a transition. There should be something changing in us constantly for the better. So what would it be if you could change anything about yourself from the inside instead of being so concerned about being conformed to the way the world thinks we should be on the outside? What would you change? How patient are you? Would you change the fact that you don't have any patience at all? 
What about your critical tongue? Would you change the fact that it seems like when you speak, you're always speaking in a critical manner? What about the fact that sometimes you're envious of other people? Would you like to change that this morning? Would you like to be free from that type of envy that destroys your soul? What about being discontent? What about being discontent? Would you like to change that this morning? That you could be content with the things God has given you? What about resentment? Would you change that? What about lust? Would you like to be free from lust? What about uh, the, the guilty conscience? What about the inability to work with other people? What about you that might be so stubborn that you just never have changed at all? Would you like to change your stubbornness? Would you like to change your temper? Would you like to change the fact that you're not thankful? What would you change about your inner self if you could this morning? Would you change yourself in such a way that God would be glorified through it? We all change things all the time, don't we? <clears throat> Sometimes you'll change jobs. Well, there's nothing wrong with changing a job from time to time. Sometimes you'll buy a new car. Even though your old car is not wore out, even though your old car is still looking good, even though your old car still runs good, just sometimes you're ready for a change, and you change a car. You change careers. Sometimes people change churches that they go to. Sometimes people start going to the gym and start working out. Sometimes you go out and buy new clothes and, and all these different things. We're changing things about ourselves all the time, but most of the time we're focusing on our outward self instead of being concerned with how we really are on the inside. And a lot of times what we are on the inside makes us ugly and makes us mean and sometimes makes us hateful and it makes us unforgiven and it makes us spiritually dead and spiritually undiscerning. What would you change about yourself today if you could change anything at all? And that's why the Lord pointed out in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. Again, that verse says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you know what that word transformed there means? It literally means, if you looked it up in a dictionary, make a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of your life. The word transform used in verse number two literally comes from the Greek word metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is the same word that Bob and the girls were singing about earlier. You must be born again. The phrase born again literally means metamorphosis. That means a drastic change. And you want to know something God here is saying, there should be a drastic change in your life. Let me ask you something. How is your transformation going? You that are saved this morning, how is your transformation going right now in your personal walk with God? Has God been able to change you on the inside at all? <clears throat> I want you to search your hearts here this morning. I want you to look into your soul. Quit worrying about what somebody else is wearing, how somebody else fixes their hair, what somebody else drives. I want you to look at what God is seeing, not the outward appearance of man, but God's looking at your heart here this morning. And God is saying there should be a transformation. There should be something changed drastically in your heart. We always used to like to sing this song when we were younger. And the song goes something like this. He's still working on me. To make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars. The sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Because he's still working on me. Now I want you to be honest with yourself and before God. Has God been able to work on you lately? Has God been able to take and make any changes in your spirit and deep down in your soul? 
Have you been as concerned about your inner person's being as you have been concerned with your outer person's appearance? Are you more concerned with being conformed to the things of this world? Or are you more concerned about God changing your inward being? Have you changed at all? Most of us change very slowly. And some of us never change at all. I've been now here at this church 11 years. In a couple of months, I'll be starting my 12th year here at the church. And I've gotten to know you pretty well, and you've gotten to know me. And in that 11-year period of time, how much have you changed for the better? I've known a lot of you for 11 years. And I'm asking you right now because I know you, and you know me. How much have you changed in 11 years? Are you praying more? Studying more? Are you attending more? Are you witnessing more? Are you more spiritual now than you were 11 years ago? Are you praising the Lord more now than you were 11 years ago? Are you serving God more right now than you were 11 years ago? Are you happier now than you were? Are you more joyful now than you were? Friends, I've come to find out that change comes slowly. And sometimes there's no change at all. As a matter of fact, as I look out over this auditorium this morning, some of you have not even changed your seat in 11 years. <laughs> Sitting in the same pew. Sitting in the same spot for the last 11 years. Now that's okay. But what I'm really trying to point out is, not so much that you've not changed seats, but have you changed inside of your heart at all in that 11 year period of time? You know that not only do we need to be changing for the good, that transformation, but we can change for the worse. What do you mean by changing for the worse, preacher? Well, let me ask you now. Search your heart. Do you find yourself complaining more than you ever have? Do you find yourself finding fault more than you ever did? Do you find that you are attending church less than you ever attended? Do you find yourself studying the Word of God less than you've ever studied it before? Do you find yourself serving God less than you've ever served Him before? Do you realize that you have lost some of your joy, that you're spiritually dead, that you have become cold, and that now you're spiritually defeated? What kind of transformation has been taking place in your spiritual walk? How many of you right now feel like there's no need to change for the better? How many of you, though, would really like to say that I know that really... I do need to change a little bit. I do, I do need to have a transformation process going on. I need to change for the better. Or are you stuck in a rut? Some of you are. Or are some of you happy where you are right now, spiritually speaking? Some of you are. Would it be all right if you never led anyone else to the Lord again? Would that be all right with you? Would it be all right with you if you never praised the Lord any more than you are doing right now? Would that be all right with you? Would it be all right if you never testified to anyone about how great God has been to you and your family and to this church? Would that be all right with you if you never did any more praising, any more worshiping, any more testifying, any more witnessing, praying, studying, attending, than you are right now. We should be able to be constantly seeing significant growth in our, in our Christian life. We should. We all need to be transfigured. We all need to experience that metamorphosis. And that's what the word transfigure means, or transitions means, to have a metamorphosis. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was transfigurated there on that mountain before those three disciples. The same word there that is being used, transfigured, it literally means metamorphosis. It's the same word that's found here in verse number two. It's the same word that Jesus, when he was talking uh, to Nicodemus, and he was telling Nicodemus, you must be born again, metamorphosis, metamorphosis. It's the same word that he used in Mark chapter nine, verse number two and verse number three. And in verse 
In chapter number 9, verse number 2, the Bible there says, And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John, leadeth them up unto a high mountain apart from themselves, and he was transfigured before him. And In other words, he was metamorphosis there. And just like Jesus was transformed there, the same word is being used in verse number 2 where it says that we should be transformed. And his raiment became shiny, exceedingly white as snow, and as no fuller on earth can white, uh, can white them. I'm here to tell you right now, praise the good Lord, that God didn't leave us like we were when we got saved. I'm glad that God did begin to work on us and begin to change us. It's a wonderful thing. When I think about metamorphosis, I'm thinking about how that God can take a caterpillar and he can change it into a butterfly. And when God is saying in verse number 2, there should be a transition going on in your life, that's what God is expecting from us, a transition going on in our life. It really is. Have you been having that kind of transition going on, not on your outward appearance, but have you had that kind of transition going on in your spiritual walk with God? Have you had that really and truly the way that you think you should have? When I think about how that God can take this old worm, how many of you ever seen a caterpillar? How that God can take an old worm and turn that worm into a butterfly is miraculous. Take this old worm that crawls, put it in a cocoon for a certain period of time, and then when he comes out of that cocoon, he flies around one of the most beautiful creatures God's ever created. Do you realize that if you were to look at that caterpillar and you didn't know anything about him becoming a butterfly, and somebody told you that one day that old squiggly worm would be able to fly around and be one of the most beautiful creatures that God has ever created, and you didn't know anything about the cocoon, and you didn't know anything about the metamorphosis that takes place under God's miraculous hand, you'd say, well, you're crazy. There's no way that old squiggly, ugly worm would ever be able to become a beautiful creature of God and literally be able to fly. But do you realize this, that when God created that caterpillar, he created that caterpillar to fly? And do you know that when that caterpillar emerges from that cocoon, that caterpillar is doing exactly what God created that caterpillar to do? Are you doing exactly what God created you to do because he's created you to do things far and above and beyond your own imagination he's created you to become more Christ like in your walk more Christ like in your talk more Christ like by your attitudes he's created you to become a more caring person a more thankful person a more loving person a more unforgiving person. God has created us to become something that when people would have looked at us before we were saved would have said, there's no way that Steve Tucker would ever become a preacher. There's no way that Steve Tucker would ever want to go to church. There's no way that Steve Tucker would ever enjoy gospel singing. There's no way you're ever going to find Steve Tucker praying. There's no way you're ever going to ever imagine Steve Tucker carrying a Bible around but I want to tell you something. There's been a transformation that's been taking place in my life. I'm not all I should be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. And boy, when God chose me, I want to tell you right now, he chose an old lump of coal. Wasn't nothing special about me, but he has taken an old lump of coal, and I like that one song that says, I might be a lump of coal now, but one of these days I'm going to be a diamond. 
And again, that comes from some miraculous transformation that something like a lump of coal can become something so beautiful and so precious and valuable. How about it with you here this morning, right now? If I were to ask you if you could change anything about yourself, what would it be? Would you like to be more loving, more caring, more compassionate? Would you like to be more unforgiving, more helpful, more of a servant? Would you like to praise him more, worship him more, pray more, study more, testify more, witness more? What would you want? If I could say that you could have anything that you would want that would change your life, what would it be? Many of you have been to the Billy Graham Library up here in Charlotte. How many of you have been there? How many of you recall that there at the Billy Graham Library there is a grave? And it's Billy Graham's wife. How many of you have seen that grave site? How many of you remember what's written on her grave site there on her grave site where Billy Graham's wife Ruth Graham is buried is written these words end of construction thank you for your patience God's wanting to do a work on your life but sometimes he can't because honestly we're not what we ought to be Is there some things in your life spiritually that you need to change for the better? Because if you're not careful, if you're not letting God transform you and change you and have that metamorphosis taking place, you can change for the worse. And you can change for the worse so quickly. How many of you here today would like to say, God, change me for the better? God, you know what I need to become a better Christian, to be a better servant, to be a better spouse, to be a better parent, or to be a better child. God, change me. I'm not so worried anymore, God, about trying to fit into this world. But God, I want you to transform me now. Change me into what you want me to be. I want to love people more, care about people more, be more compassionate, be more loving, more forgiving. Have you been transformed at all lately? Has God been able to do anything with you lately or with me? Or have we just gotten so caught up trying to conform trying to be accepted, trying to please this world instead of pleasing God. Are you praying more than you've ever prayed? Been reading your Bible more than you've ever been reading it? Attending more worship services than you ever attended? Have you been witnessing more than you've ever witnessed? Have you been testifying, telling people about God more than you've ever told them about? Do you realize right now spiritually there needs to be a change for the better? A change for the better. In some people's lives, you've not changed at all. Not at all. And God says there should be a transformation. Let's stand to our feet. As these have come and begin to pray, maybe others would like to come and just join them in prayer. Maybe you need to come and just pray and say, God, please change me. God, I need to be changed. God, I've become complacent. God, I've just become used to sitting in the same place, going through the same motions, just doing the same things I've done for so long but God I want now so much more I want to love you more God than I've ever loved you before 
God, I want to spend more time with you than I've ever spent before. God, I want you to speak to me. God, I want you to lead me. God, I want you to help me. If God's speaking to your heart today, why don't you come? God, change me. God, change me for the better. Forgive me, God, for where I've slipped and maybe not been changed, but been changed for the worse. I've been changed for the worse. I've been more interested in the things of this world than I've been interested in spiritual matters. Change me, Lord. Maybe you're here today and like the song has already said, you don't know that you're born again. You've never had that metamorphosis take place, that change in your life. Where old things are passed away and all things become new, you've never experienced that wonderful blessing. Maybe right now you don't know for sure that you're saved. Why don't you come meet me right here? Let me pray with you. I'm not going to be satisfied without leading people to the Lord. I don't want to go the rest of my life without seeing somebody saved. I don't want to go the rest of my life without being able to be a witness for the Lord. To give a testimony about His goodness and His grace. If you're here today and you're lost, please come. God wants to save and forgive you of all your sins and save your soul. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Well, people here are praying. Maybe others would like to come and pray with some of their friends and some of their neighbors here. Or maybe you just need to come yourself. Lord, change me. Change me for the better. Lord, I don't feel like I've changed at all in quite some time. I don't think I've grown spiritually, Lord, in quite a while. Lord, I've forgotten what it was like to be growing like I used to grow spiritually. God, help me. Change me, Lord. Change me. Bless each and every one of your hearts for being here today, and I hope you all have a great, great day today. We're going to continue looking tonight into the book of Romans, and I want to encourage you to come tonight and learn more about the Word of God, Wednesday night services as well, the children's activities and things of that nature. Be much in prayer for Josh and Brittany. Brittany's grandfather passed away, and their grandfather, her grandfather's funeral is this afternoon up there close to the Tennessee uh, borderline. Actually, I believe the funeral is going to take place in Tennessee. So let's remember them as they're traveling and coming back. They're hopefully they're going to try to travel back this evening. But, but remember Brittany and Josh and their family in prayer and so many others that we've made mention of that are in bereavement at this time and so many that are facing some procedures this week. Let's continue to remember them all in prayer. And again, more, I wish uh, Donnie a happy birthday. And Daryl's got a big 6-0 coming up pretty soon, I understand. And uh, so we really need to be praying for him. That's, that's a big milestone. I mean, that's one of the big ones. I mean, it's about like knocking you out of the saddle when you hit that point. And, well, you're talking about transformation taking place now, buddy. You're going to realize it as soon as that 6-0 takes place. You, you're just going to know it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. All right, thank God. Today you made one day. Amen. Amen. Forty-four years. Isn't that great? Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God bless y'all. Well, let's be dismissed in prayer. Don't forget now next Saturday, Fall Festival starts at 430. And also the next Saturday after that, we're going to be having a stew, and that's going to be a wonderful time. And they'll be starting uh, the stew business on Friday evening. They'll be getting the stew pots out. Then Saturday morning, 
Come out and have a good time of fellowship with the preparations, uh, peeling potatoes and onions, and, and then they get out there and start stirring that big old pots, and there's two pots, and you can help stir. If you never stirred before, I promise you, we'll give you on-the-job training, and uh, by the end of the day, you'll be just as experienced as you need to be, and so forth like that. But let's bow our heads. God, thank you for being our God. Thank you, dear God, for not giving up on us. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for being willing to take an old chunk of coal and continue to work on that chunk of coal till one of these days I'll be a diamond. God bless us now for these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.